The Death Cure by James Dashner, Chapter 66. Everything came into focus at that moment for Thomas. There had been a, fasc a fantasism about Vince that hadn't fully hit him until now. And there was the way the right arm had treated Thomas and his friends in the van after taking them hostage at the Berg. Also, why did they have all these explosives but no real conventional weapons? It didn't make sense unless their goal was to destroy, not take over. The right arm wasn't exactly on the same page as he was. Maybe they thought their motives were pure, but Thomas was beginning to realize that the organization had a darker purpose. He needed to step carefully. All that mattered at the moment was saving his friends and finding and releasing the others who'd been captured. The lady's voice interrupted Thomas's thoughts. You're doing a lot of heavy thinking in that noggin of yours. Yeah, sorry. When do you think they're going to set off the explosives? Pretty soon, I suppose. They've been planting for hours. They want them all to detonate at the same time, but I'm guessing we aren't quite that skilled. What about all the people inside? What about the ones we came to rescue? The two of them looked at each other, then shrugged. Vince hopes to get everyone out. He hopes? What does that mean? He hopes. I need to talk to him. What Thomas really wanted was to find Minot and Brenda, right arm or no right arm. He knew what they had to do. Get to the maze and lead everyone out there to the flat trans. The lady pointed to the hole in the side of the building. Just through there a ways is an area they've pretty much taken over. You'll probably find Finn Vince there. Careful though, Wicked's got guards hiding all over the place, and they're vicious little buggers. Thanks for the warning, Thomas turned, eager to get inside. The hole loomed over him, dusty darkness waiting within. There were no more alarms or flashing red lights. He stepped through. At first, Thomas didn't see or hear anything. He walked in silence, careful of what might be around each turn. The lights got brighter the farther he walked, and he finally spotted a door at the end of the hallway that had been propped open. He jogged to it and peered in to see a large room with tables scattered across the floor on their sides like shields. Several people crouched behind them. The people were watching a large set of double doors on the other side of the room, and no one noticed him as he squeezed against the doorframe. Hiding most of his body from the inside, he leaned his head in to get a better look. He spotted Vince and Galley behind one of the tables, but didn't recognize anyone else. On the far left side of the room, there was a small office, and he could tell that at least nine or ten people were huddled inside. He strained to see, but couldn't make out any faces. Hey! He whispered as loudly as he dared. Hey! Callie! The boy turned immediately, but had to glance around a few seconds before he spotted Thomas. Galley squinted as though he thought his eyes might be tricking him. Thomas waved to make sure he saw him, and Galley motioned for him to come over. Thomas looked around again to make sure it was safe. Then he crouched down, ran over to the table, and collapsed on the ground next to his old nemesis. He had so many questions, he didn't know where to begin. What happened? Galley asked him. What did they do to you? Vince shot him a glare but didn't say anything. Thomas didn't know how to answer. They ran a few tests. Look, I found out where they're keeping the immunes. You can't blow this place up until we get them out. Then go get them, Vince said. We've got a one-shot deal here and I'm not going to waste it. You brought some of those people here, Thomas looked at Galley for support, but he only got a shrug in response. Thomas was on his own. Where's Brenda, Minot, everyone else, he asked. Galley nodded toward the side room. Those guys are all in there. Said they wouldn't do anything until you came back. Thomas suddenly felt sorry for the scared boy inside beside him. Come with me, Galley. Let these guys do whatever they want, but come help us. Don't you wish somebody had done the same for us when we were in the maze? Vince spun on them. 
Don't even think about it, he barked. Thomas, you knew coming in here what our goals were. If you abandon us now, I'll consider you a turncoat. You'll be a target. Thomas kept his focus on Galley. He saw a sadness in the boy's eyes that made his heart break, and he also saw something he'd never seen before. Trust. Genuine trust. Come with us, Thomas said. A smile formed on his old enemy's face, and he responded in a way Thomas never would have expected. Okay. Thomas didn't wait for Vince to react. He grabbed Galley's arm and they scooted away from the table together, then ran to the office and slipped inside. Minot was the first to see him, pulling him into a bear hug as Galley watched awkwardly from the side. Then the others were there, Minot, Brenda, Jorge, Teresa, even Eris. Thomas almost got dizzy from the quick exchange of hugs and words of relief and welcome. He was especially thrilled to see Brenda, and he held on to her longer than anyone else. But as good as it felt, he knew they didn't have time for it. He pulled away. I can't explain everything now. We have to go find the immunes Wicked took and then find this backdoor flat trans I learned about. And we need to hurry before the right arm blows this place up. Where are the immunes? Brenda asked. Yeah, what did you learn? Minot added. Thomas never thought he'd say what he had to say next. We need to go back to the maze. <laughs>